Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create custom donut graphs for your design system. So without further ado, let's just get started. Do subscribe and do hit the bell icon. I was thinking of creating a larger video where I demonstrate how to create different types of graphs. But in order to keep the video size small, I'm just going to go ahead and create the donut chart for now. And then we can create the other ones like the line chart, uh, the bar graph, so on and so forth. So I'm going to rename this to donut graph or something, donut graphs. Okay, so without further to do, what you have to do is you can give a frame and you can give it a size. I'm going to give this a size of 500 by 500. Then I'm going to draw a rectangle or a circle, a shape inside of it. And I'm going to also make this 500 by 500. Then I'm going to drag this arc and I'm going to go to the middle point and I'm going to drag this out. So you can also press shift to drag it incrementally by the by the values of 10. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep this 80. The thickness is going to be 80. I'm now going to go ahead and give this a background. So this is going to be our base that's going to be sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same. I'm going to duplicate this and now I'm going to have this have this particular base uh, this is not going to be a base this is actually going to be the one of the values on the donut graph and i'm going to give this a value now as you can see one thing that i don't like is this value is scaling first of all we want to start from the zero point or from this particular point but i want this to rotate clockwise not anti-clockwise currently it's like moving anti-clockwise so in order to do that you just need to go ahead and actually drag it completely or scale it completely to the top and then move it on the other side so now we have it moving uh, perfectly clockwise which is exactly what we wanted so now this is going to be the first value i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and i'm going to increase the value here i'm going to say this is going to be primary 100. now obviously since this is the larger value this needs to move back so we can see the first value. So that's done. Now we can also go ahead and give another value here and say this is gonna be our primary 200. And let's just go ahead and resize it slightly. And then we can also go ahead and have another one, move it back and have this primary 300 and scale it. So here we have four of the values that we want in this donut graph. One other thing that we can do is, which I think actually looks good, is have these as these rounded so you can have these rounded and in order for everything to be rounded you need to make everything rounded and i think this is also one way of doing this but maybe in this case we don't want to make it rounded you can also give this flat and here you have it you have four values inside of it if you can also have like let's say hover indicators here but i generally want to have some sort of a label here like for example active seats or something and let's just go ahead and give it a reduced size like maybe 18 and then make it medium and Let's go ahead and actually give a particular value like 1282, but we need to make this one large since this is the actual value. And we can also make this bold, I think, or maybe semi-bold is gonna be fine. Okay, so I think semi-bold is fine. Let's just go ahead and reduce the spacing here. And I think we're almost done. I'm just gonna give this a neutral 300 and I'm gonna give this the body color. So this is the first type of graph, the first type of donut graph. So I'm gonna say graph slash donut one and then make a component out of it. Now there's one other type of donut graph that I wanna create and I'm gonna basically duplicate this component. So obviously it's the same size and I'm gonna create a component. So this, as, as you can see, it's already renamed to donut two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of these and we're gonna have this circle. But this particular donut is actually gonna have all of the circles visible, like for example, as layers. So what we can do here is, first of all, I'm gonna make this a bit thin. And I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna make this the same way that I actually made this here. I'm actually gonna make this 100%. So now, as you can see, this is a single line. I'm gonna add a stroke around it. And this stroke is gonna be the background that I'm gonna use to give this. I'm gonna give this a particular size, like maybe 25. That's the thickness I need, or maybe I need it 30. Maybe 30 is fine. Or maybe 25 is also okay. So let's just go with 25 in this case. Now I am gonna, first of all, go ahead and actually create four instances of this particular thing. So I'm gonna duplicate this. Now there's gonna be another instance. So as you can see, 25 and then 25, and then I'm gonna go ahead and choose the spacing in between. Since the original shape was 25, and this one is also gonna be 25 since I was, so one mistake that I did, I was resizing this using the scale tool, which I should not have done. So I'm gonna to move to the 
normal resize tool and then I'm going to drag it. So now this is also going to be preserved as 25. So this is 25 and the space, this is also 25, but the spacing from the edges is 35. So the spacing in between both of these would be 10. And I'm going to keep that consistent. I'm going to duplicate this again and I am going to make this 65 now. Sorry, not 65. So this is 60 and then we're going to go ahead and make this 70. So again, another 10 pixel and we're going to go ahead and reduce it in size. So now, as you can see, this is okay. This is fine, 25. Sorry, let's go back. So this is 25. Now we just need to increase it by, or decrease it by 10. So this is gonna be 105 on the edges. I'm basically using the edges as an indicator of how much spacing that I have to give. So now we have these four graphs or four bars. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate them. And now we're gonna do the same thing that we did previously. So this isn't the ratio we, can, we don't have to actually mess with the ratio, we have to mess with the sweep. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this a size. So this is gonna be the 74 one. Let's just go ahead and actually move it to the start. And let's go ahead and give it a similar scale as we did previously here. I'm gonna duplicate this one as well. And first of all, give this a primary 75. Sweep it, scale it, do whatever. And basically just have it here like this. I'm trying to actually duplicate it similar to what we have here, but, and I'm not gonna be very precise about it. I'm just giving you an idea as to how to create something like this. If you want to be very precise, you can go ahead and do that yourself. So now that we have this one, I'm gonna resize this and let's just go ahead and actually move it here. This particular one is gonna be slightly larger from the other ones, so it's gonna be sitting there. And then I'm gonna duplicate this one, give this a color, primary 300. Sorry, maybe we can actually do primary, sorry, was this primary 300, 300, then 200, then 100, and then 75. So one, two, three, four. So this is this first one should be 75. This one should be 100. This one should be 200. And then this one should be 300. So I made a mistake assigning the colors. Now let's go ahead and sweep it, move it at the start, and maybe have it like this. Now, one other thing that you can do is you can keep it the way it is, or you can make these rounded as well. In order to make this rounded, this is really simple. I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go to the endpoints, and instead of none, I can give it round. So now this is gonna be rounded. As you can see, the size is also the same. The spacing is also the same, but this requires some precision. It, it isn't as simple as this one. So just wanted to demonstrate how to create these two different types of donut charts. I'm gonna do some of the other charts. Let me know if you're interested in charts or if you're interested in any other type of design system element that you want me to go ahead and create first, like for example, cards or maybe some other element. One minor thing that I completely forgot to add is you can actually have labels here or let's say the, what do we call it? Uh, yeah, you can probably just call them labels. So you can also have labels here as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually create labels here for you. And we're gonna go ahead and give this a primary 75. So let's just give this a primary 75 color and say this is gonna be our first value make this left aligned and reduce the size to maybe something like 18. And here we have the first value. Let's just give this an auto layout. Then we have the second value. Also create an auto layout around this one. So second value. Then we have a third, fourth. So third value and then fourth value. So here we have some values and you can actually organize the spacing however you like. I'm just gonna keep this at the middle and gonna give this a consistent 48 pixel spacing here because I wanna keep it within the grid. I'm also, in a good gun. I'm also going to go ahead and actually create an auto layout here. So this whole thing that, we, that you actually see here is gonna be uh, all of these, like not these, but actually apart, everything apart from this. So this, these are gonna be the labels but everything that you see here can actually be a frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give an auto layout here. So just in case if we have larger labels, it scales as well. So now what we wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and actually copy the same thing here. Let's just go ahead and actually create a frame around it. This is gonna be our graph and give this an auto layout and place it here as well. I'm gonna position it to the center and give a 48 pixel spacing here as well. 
actually one thing that i missed was i didn't update the colors here so let's just go ahead and update the colors so we are consistent so 300 200 100 and that's pretty much what we have so now let's just go ahead and duplicate this here as well if we want i think these can actually be slightly reduced in size as well so instead these can be 16 maybe and even the labels can be a bit reduced so instead of let's say text minus lg maybe these can be text minus medium or text medium so maybe this is okay uh, the color obviously does not need to be uh, black it needs to be a it can be a neutral shade like maybe neutral 600 just to keep it like subtle like not really that subtle but just light i'm going to replace it here as well so now if you want to give certain properties to this component you can do so so for example here you have the values in the middle so if you want to make it customizable you can just go to the layer you can say value so values are going to be visible by default and you can say these labels are also going to be visible by default so i'm going to say labels and you can apply the same properties here to this one so actually these aren't variants so if you want to keep them as variants then you would be able to link the properties but if you don't have these as variants you would have to create these properties uh, specifically again for all of the other different types of graphs that you have which i think is fine there's one val there's one benefit of actually having these as components and i'm going to go ahead and actually create this is going to be the value i think this is also the a val this is also value yeah okay so one benefit of actually com uh, not combining them as variants is let's say if i actually go ahead and drag this somewhere around and I'm going to go ahead and change this to Donut 1, Donut 2. I can't really see if it's like Donut 1 or Donut 2 or whatever. So, like, I don't, I can't see what this Donut looks like. So that's, I think, something that actually I don't like personally. But if you are okay with that and there's no problem with it, then you can actually combine them as variants. And I think if you combine them as variants, it's a much better experience. But if you don't combine them, combine them as variants, like I'm just going to go ahead and showcase that here. So this is a Donut 1. You can now go ahead and actually see what this donut graph is going to look like here and then you can also mess with the label properties so whether you want this value visible or whether you want the labels visible that's going to be completely up to you so for now i'm what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and actually combine them as, them as variants because i don't know i really like how they look as variants this is going to be the type of donut graph and we can also change these or make these values uh, component properties as well, but I don't really think it's needed. If you want, you can just change them by double clicking it. I can just showcase them here. So this can be, sorry, this can be double click it. This can be whatever. If you try to change this, this can be whatever. This is gonna be the first value, second value, third, and you can change it. One thing that I don't like here is this isn't centered. So let's just go ahead and actually select both of these and center them. So I'm gonna say center. And now as you can see, those are centered. So that's pretty much it what I wanted to cover for this video. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. Let me know if you found this interesting and the other types of components that you want me to cover later on in some of the later videos. So I'm gonna see you later. Thank you for dropping by and let's see you in the next video. Take care, bye.